I have to tell you that I feel like I am a pretty lucky person because I have had the opportunity to live in some of the coolest places in the world, including the coolest little capital here in Wellington, New Zealand. And I was blessed to be born to parents who were brave enough to drag me to some of these places, sometimes despite my own strong objections. If you can imagine a 13-year-old being told that she had to uproot and move halfway around the world. And I'm willing to bet that many of you in this room were probably raised hearing a philosophy similar to this, what I learned from my parents. That anybody can lead an extraordinary life as long as you dare to try and you don't let anybody stop you, not even an indignant teenager. Now, if you were raised with this philosophy or if you're spoon-feeding similar mantras to your children, then I have a question for you today, and I want you to be really honest when you consider the answer. Right here, right now, today, do you believe that you are leading an extraordinary life? And if your answer is no, do you still believe that you can? Now, I know that we all have moments And those moments are, for example, when you're looking at your friend's Facebook feed and your life seems, well, a little less exciting. <laughs> Or when you're sitting on the couch, perhaps, and you're watching an Olympic athlete push her body beyond, it seems, the laws of gravity. And suddenly, that afternoon run you were planning seems just a little bit pointless. <laughs> Or dare I say it, After you've seen someone take a TED Talk stage, a brilliant mind, an innovator, inventor, 30 years old or 13, <laughs> and they've already changed the world, and you look in the mirror and you ask yourself, how do I add value? We all have moments. But it's when those moments start to become what we believe, when they really start to sink in, that it can stop you in your tracks and keep you from leading an extraordinary life. When I was first entertaining the idea of public speaking, I went to a veteran speaker for a little advice. And she told me flat out, no one's going to want to hear what you have to say. My story is simply this. I have lived a lot of different places, and I did work in television news for 20 years, at one point reporting on the streets of Detroit while raising a young family. And I even hosted a children's television show in Saudi Arabia, which is, by the way, where my parents moved when I was 13. And so I thought, maybe I have a little something to share about embracing change and blooming where you're planted. But the speaker summed up my life thusly. Big deal. So you've moved a lot, and you worked a little in TV. Nobody knows your name. You don't have any great story of overcoming any struggle. No one's going to care. Now, that could have stopped me in my tracks. But I knew what she was trying to say, because I had worked in news, and hero stories sell. And I'm no hero. I'm no brilliant mind, innovator, scientist, Olympic athlete, or even someone who's climbed a mountain of any significance, even though here in New Zealand that seems to be a rite of passage, so <laughs> give me time. Nothing about my story is guaranteed to grab attention. Words grab my attention, and they have since I was a little girl. I used to love books, and I would climb to the tippy top of tall trees so that I could savor every word in silence. And I had this amazing vocabulary. I wasn't very popular, as you might imagine. <laughs> But later in news, I learned how to unclutter my words and speak more conversationally, communicate concisely with clarity. So it's fitting that today I'm focusing on one word. And I love this word because it's a little bit too big for its britches, isn't it? It conjures these grandiose images when all it really means is extraordinary, one step beyond the ordinary. I think it's time that we redefine what this word is or remember what it really means, because I think we don't all have to be heroes. We can all lead extraordinary lives that can impact others. There are so many supporting roles that we can play 
that add plot twists and texture and perspective to this narrative that we call life. And I know this is true because I've interviewed some of these people. They're not headline makers, but the stories that they have shared with me have impacted my life. They've changed the way I act or think. And so they taught me that yes, we can lead extraordinary lives if we believe we can. So what stops us? When I was working in news, there were a lot of kids in newsrooms, and they would come to me for advice. They'd want to know how to write a better story, or they'd want to know maybe my story, how I'd achieved the things that I had in life, my personal and professional goals. They were bright, they were enthusiastic, but they were untested. They were seeking confidence and a few trade secrets. So what I shared with them, I'm going to share with you today, the three secrets to leading an extraordinary life and not getting stuck along the way. And the first one is, tune in to your spidey sense. I would tell newbie reporters that your spidey sense will tingle when there is a question in the back of your mind that you haven't asked. You might even think it's too inconsequential to even pay attention to. Ask that question, I would tell them, because that is the question that the viewer sitting on the couch at home is hoping that you're going to ask. And I know because when I followed my spidey sense and I'd ask these questions, viewers would email and say thank you. And when I didn't, oh, I'd hear from them too. <laughs> It's just your intuition telling you where you're supposed to go in life. So why don't we always follow our intuition? We know how that feels. Maybe for you, it's played out like this. You have been reading a newspaper and you see a job advertisement and it jumps right off the page at you and you have that moment of excitement. And then the sensible voice tunes in or chimes in and says, what are you thinking? Don't tip the boat or don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat because you might tip it. And things really aren't that bad. And so you step away and then later you regret it. And if you've done that, don't beat yourself up now about it because it is just proof that your spidey sense is in good working order. Tune into your spidey sense. Secret number one to leading an extraordinary life. Secret number two, spot the signs. One of my favorite movies of all time is Steve Martin's L.A. story. And in it, there are California road signs that send his character clear messages about the next steps he's supposed to take in life. Wouldn't that just be the coolest thing if we had these huge honking road signs with hundreds of light bulbs illuminating our path forward? <laughs> the truth is that in real life, there are signs, but they're often tiny and easy to miss. When I was in high school, I spotted a sign. I was sitting in class, staring out the window, when something fluttered and caught my eye. So when I left the classroom, I stopped to see what it was. It was a tiny piece of paper stuck to the window with a single piece of tape, and on it was an invitation to apply to Oxford or Cambridge. And I had that moment, and a tiny voice inside whispered, why not try? And then this loud, booming voice chimed in and said, you really think you could get in? But I trusted that I had spotted that sign for a reason, so I stood my ground and I reasoned back. What are they really going to do? Chase me down the street with my application in hand, shouting so that everybody can hear, how dare you think you can go to Oxford University? <laughs> so I applied and I got in. And when I got there, I was surrounded by brilliant minds, scientists, inventors, probably Olympians, who climbed mountains in their spare time. <laughs> Godlike heroes that they were, I was just happy to attend. It opened my mind and so many doors later in life. And it was an experience that I never would have had if I hadn't spotted the signs. Secret number two to an extraordinary life. Secret number three, silence your fear. Now, I could have been stopped right there at that door in high school if I had given in to the F word, fear. <laughs> have you ever heard it described as false evidence appearing real? It's a really good acronym when you have that loud, obnoxious voice of fear in your head trying to stop you from doing what you think you might be able to do. And by the way, it gets louder and more obnoxious the more you try to ignore it. The point is, you don't ignore fear. You do listen to it. 
Because, as people who have climbed mountains will tell you, sometimes fear is sending you some really critical information. So you live with fear, you sit with it, you scan it for any information that might be of real value, and then you turn the volume way down. And it takes practice to do that. It also takes courage. There is a public speaker and author who encouraged me to take the podium and share my stories. Her name is Cindy Solomon, and she identifies four different kinds of courage. The courage that Cindy says you need to silence your fear is core courage. In other words, you choose to be courageous, knowing all of the consequences. Now, I'm someone that If you give me a challenge, I'll identify every possible pitfall and worst case scenario. I get it from my mother, who gets it from her mother, who she says considered worrying a religion. <laughs> But the truth is, we're all courageous women. We have all leapt into the unknown, eyes wide open, knowing that if the worst case scenario happened, at least we'd have an adventure to show for it. Silence your fear. Secret number three. To an extraordinary life. And what an extraordinary adventure moving to New Zealand has been. I did leave behind a career of 20 years and a comfortable life in sunny California to move sight unseen to windy and wet Wellington. <laughs> and some people thought I was just a little crazy. But the truth is, if I'm being honest with myself and with those kids in the newsroom, I had gotten stuck. It looked like I was living my life full speed ahead, but on a daily basis, I was overriding my own spidey sense that was telling me I had outgrown my job and my life on the outside did not reflect who I was on the inside. And there were signs. I did not know then that I would be moving to Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud, but I spotted in the clouds, and I've enhanced it so that you can see clearly what I saw, <laughs> the first three letters of my name. And I took that to mean it's up to me to write the rest of my story, not just let life happen. A far clearer sign came to my husband. In the form of a single tweet, letting him know about this position down in the Southern Hemisphere. And his spidey sense tingled, and he applied. And three weeks later, he was offered the position. And we sat down together to silence our fear, carefully considering the consequences, because this time we had a couple of our own somewhat indignant children we were uprooting. And then we took the leap, eyes wide open. And what did we find out? You can rock the boat and it doesn't tip over. And you can get unstuck and lead an extraordinary life once again. I mean, look at me. I was just considering public speaking, told no one would care. And I'm standing on the little round rug of a TED Talk stage. Dreams can come true. People who aren't heroes can lead extraordinary lives. And I know that what I'm sharing up here is not necessarily anything scientific, even though there is new science or new studies that show there is something to innovation, to innovation, to intuition, <laughs> wishful thinking there. So it may not be anything new that I'm sharing, and it may not be anything scientific. And right there, I know I have broken two rules of a good TED talk. But the wisdom I am sharing is passed down from generation to generation, from my parents to me, theirs to them, and yet, somehow, it is still not always getting through, or at least it's not sticking. So that's why I'm here today, to tell you that if your answer when I asked you those questions in the beginning was no, that you don't believe you can lead an extraordinary life, or that you don't think you are now, to redefine what extraordinary means to you, remembering it is just one step beyond the ordinary, one step beyond your comfort zone. And I challenge you, because history shows that people learn things through stories, individual stories impacting individual people. If any one of you feels impacted by anything you've heard here today, go out and act on it. Take that step, take that leap with your eyes wide open. And if you do, I promise you that you will have an adventure to live and a story to tell 
And who knows, next year, this may be you standing up here on a TED Talk stage, sharing an idea worth spreading. Thank you.